Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited for today's podcast because we've got two people on. It's like, you know, we usually do our podcast with two people, but now we get two guests. But before we introduce our guests, I would be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. Typically the smartest guy in the room, Six Sigma, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. And today's podcast is sponsored by postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. I remember when I used to manually post my listings on Craigslist, and now I just press a button and I get 150 posts a day automated. Postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm excited for our guests. Are you? I am. Are you ready to enter the like the den, the lion's den? I am ready to enter the lion's den. I'm a little scared, but I'll tell you why I'm scared. Because Bill Watkins is a West Point graduate, decorated army officer, a world-class athlete, corporate executive, and an entrepreneur took his business from his garage to an eight-figure valuation when he sold it. Uh, that's one of our guests, right? Like this guy is scary, but scary good. And then his partner is Robert Mallon, a nationally recognized professional speaker, business coach, and mentor. He's done close to 2,000 full day seminars and has inspired thousands to achieve their unrealized potential. As a business coach, he has personally helped hundreds of people with their leadership, business, and life. From the Rusty Lion Academy, how are you guys? <laughs> well, Robert, welcome to the podcast. Man, Robert, we're, just, we're just trying to take it all in, what you just said about us. What, yeah, Robert, have curious. we ever had an introduction like that? Gosh. <laughs> Good stuff. The yeah. lion's den will never be the same. You know, what's funny is, you know, I feel like the West Point grads don't get the same respect as like someone from, from Harvard might, right? But really, West Point's a big deal. Um, and... Bill, I'll, I'll just say it. Like, it, it's scary. You're intimidating. Oh, uh, no. Rob, Robert knows that I'm a teddy bear at heart. I may look grizzly bear on the outside, but um, uh, uh, not, not, not true. Um, but I would say this. Um, I, stay along, I stay up with West Point and um, still ranked right there behind, I think, Harvard and Yale as uh, one of the top, I don't know, three, maybe top five uh, institutions, academic institutions in the country. Yeah, so so thank, I, thanks for putting us up there in that stratosphere. Yeah, yeah. So I, I imagine you guys are, you know, entrepreneurs and you're, and you're looking around the world and you're saying, you know what, it looks like everybody is stressed out mm. and mentally, physically, emotionally. Mm. And even if you're doing well financially, Maybe you're not doing so well at home emotionally, or maybe you're not doing so well physically, right? So mm. all the dashboards that are important in your life all come together. And is that how Rusty Lion got started, or how did it come to, to be? Bill, let me jump on this one real quick. Back in 2002, um, my career, this is Robert, but my career, I was in uh, restaurants for about 20, almost 25 years, and then software for about eight in 2002, I was just burnt out. I was like done with corporate life. I didn't want to do that anymore. It just, you know, getting out of bed in the morning just wasn't any fun anymore. So I hired a coach. And over the course of about a year, he helped me determine what I really wanted to do in my life, which is what we get to do now. So I started speaking and then working with businesses internally with the leadership teams. Back in 20, now, and by the way, though, during, during all these years after that, I was really a lone wolf kind of guy, did my own thing, you know, got booked, I'd go do it, whatever. Back in 2013, Bill, who's been my best friend now for a couple of decades, he had sold all of his uh, companies and he had, uh, I'm not going to say retired at all, but he had moved up to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which is where he lives now with his beautiful wife, Donna. And uh, he just needed something else to do. He'd sold all his businesses and he was too young to stop at that point. 
So he said, you know, I've been thinking about this. And Bill, by the way, West Point grad, like you say, but he was a mechanical engineer, okay, which is like, I can't even say that word. You know, he's a systems guy. He's that kind of guy, you know. So he thinks, he thinks really, really deeply. He said, man, I've been thinking, and I'm thinking maybe we should work together. I think it took me about four seconds and I went, dude, I'm in. <laughs> I don't care what it is, but let's do something, you know. So he's got the same heart that I've got for helping people and specifically helping men and mm. business owners. And so we started it. That, that's how it got started. Mm. We, we really had a very good vision for which way we wanted to go. So that's what we've been building on ever since. Mm -hmm. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? So, you know, you guys, what, what I, what I like about what you guys are doing is you're on a, you're on a bigger why you're on, you're on a mission, you know, like you're not there to have a business that just pays some bills. You're, you're there to, um, to kind of help other people, but it's really not just in a way, I think, you know, when, when you help other people, you're also helping yourselves, right? No, oh, totally. We, much. we literally <clears throat> tell our clients that their success is our success. We actually hold them to that because Sometimes guys will lean in and then they're not serious enough and we're not getting the results that we've promised. And um, uh, we'll, we'll hold them accountable for that because uh, that's what we're here to do. And we said pre-show, um, a win at work and a loss at home is, a law, is not a win at all. And so uh, Robert and I have both been there. Robert mentioned it a little bit. We were both drivers, just like probably lots of uh, people in your audience, men and women. Uh, we say that the most important things in our life are our wife, our husband, and our kids, our family, uh, but we don't act that way. And uh, it's not anybody's fault. It's just the way the world works. And so we, we have chosen to um, draw a line in the sand and we say, no, that is not okay. And it is not true what you read in the media and what everybody's apparently looks like on the outside. Um, they don't have it all together because they're trying to do 5 million things all at once and they're all important. And um, uh, the words that we had a uh, client give us when we uh, were onboarding him about a month or two ago, he described his life. It looked good on the outside. He's one of the most successful entrepreneurs in Wyoming. Um, Chaos, frenzy, out of control. That's not a good way to live. So in eight weeks, can you take someone ca with chaos, frenzy, and out of control? Can you tell us a story about <laughs> what happens after eight weeks? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go down that road first. I just had a conversation this morning, early this morning, with a guy who is in uh, – and I'm not even going to tell you what, what he does for a living, but he's got quite a few people working for him. His major thing is he's married for 10 years and he's got a six-year-old and a three-year-old. And because he's working so many hours, uh, his wife is starting to make ultimatums with him, if you can kind of read between the lines here. So his whole thing is I've got, I don't have a good system. I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to get better. I'm doing the best I can do. Mm. We talked and talked and he really, you know, started really sharing the pain that he's going through right now, because seriously, he mm. wants to be a great dad and he wants to be a great uh, husband. And he also wants to be a great business leader. Mm -hmm. He's not really, he, he's got the position, but he's not fulfilling. So what we're going to do with him is um, the prescription would be for him to go through what we call freedom boot camp. It's an eight week, very intensive, um, system that builds upon each session that gives him a, and this, these are the key words, sophisticated time management organizational system that he can use for the rest of his life. This young man is 35 years old. He'll be working until he's 60, 70, 65, 70 years old. So he's got another 35, 35 years. He will be able to use those eight weeks for the next 30 years. Mm -hmm. So that bottom line, he works less hours, but gets more done. Okay. How do we do that? I'm not going to tell you. It's not the how that's important. It works, but yeah. I, 
I think the other thing I wanted to mention, Robert, is um, Robert has developed these incredible tools. They're so sophisticated. They're even elegant um, that none of us are given uh, by our parents, by our universities or anything. But one thing that we do deliver that also uh, our clients use for the rest of their life is a mindset. Mm -hmm. And it is not the mindset that you read about. Uh, in all our, you know, fast company entrepreneur Forbes and all that. It's, it's things like, no, you cannot get it all done. And no, it, you can't live on four hours of sleep. And no, you can't work 100 hours a week, things like that. But you can uh, deliver a billion dollar impact, what you were put on earth for. So we're not we're not life woo woo life coaches telling you to go meditate and all that, although that is part of the prescription, but we are all about building awesome businesses without screwing up the rest of your life, getting home to the dinner table on time, being able to be present with the ones you love. Uh, and Robert's got the system that we teach in eight, weeks life transformational changes in eight weeks it Mark, is let, me, let me give you one more quick analogy if it's okay with you but yeah back, absolutely back in my restaurant days i had a, a really nice restaurant in downtown atlanta caddy corner to the restaurant this was back in probably 1988 or nine or something but they started building um a, a skyscraper but for about five months what i saw was about a five story deep hole in the ground and what they were doing was they were putting together the foundation and I kept going when are they going to start building when are they you know and it took forever I mean like literally a half a year I never saw anything above ground but I'd go over there and I'd look down in that hole and I'd watch what they were doing and they were they were busy and they were working hard well it ended up being about a 60 story building that they built on top of that but I'm asking you Mark if they had not put that foundation in would that 60 story building have ever stood up? No, absolutely not. And, and that's, that's the problem that so many people have is they were never, never taught the right foundation to, to build their success upon. That's why they work 60 hours a week, which is ridiculous. You shouldn't be working that much. You know, you just got to get those tools. Anyway, Let's move on. Hey, Mark, I wanted to give two resources to your audience, if I could. Um, I just finished Scott Eblen's book called Overworked and Overwhelmed. Mm. And it is an awesome resource uh, for your audience uh, if they're readers, and they should be readers, but if they're readers, they will find this book very illuminating and very prescriptive. And the second one that I really, really like, uh, James Glick, G-L-E-I-C-K, wrote a book called Faster. The, the title is actually spelled F-S-T-R mm -hmm. because in today's world, we don't even have enough time to spell F-A-S-T-E-R, so we cut out the vowels. Um, uh, Scott gives us a prescription for how to lift ourselves out of what seems to be a normal lifestyle, uh, and he gives a lot of case studies. He's an executive coach to corporate America. But what James does is chronicle why the four of us and your audience are living in this society. He, he kind of uh, makes an analogy that it's a little bit like the matrix. And I saw on your website, you have the red pill, blue pill. Well, right. that's I love, yeah, I love that movie. Well, James says, if you read this book, you're taking the blue pill because you wake up and you realize that the way that you're living, it's not your fault. He chronicles how time became so important to us and get, kept getting sped up until today we have this mistaken belief of all these things related to time. And he says, I can help you take the blue pill, wake up still go big at the office and that's what Robert and I do go big at work but but don't blow it up at home mm -hmm. that's not okay don't have a heart attack don't you know get the call from the police that your teenager is you know in trouble and don't you know have your wife sitting there asking you to move out to the studio apartment that sort of thing uh, if you're a guy so um, those are two great resources that I, I would like to encourage your audience to lean into. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, as I, was, I was looking at your website. I, there's a there's a phrase in there that I absolutely love, and it's it's how to basically, you know, avoid 
the tyranny of the urgent, mm. right? <laughs> and I feel like in today's smartphone, always connected society, yep. it's so easy to get pulled in to the tyranny of the urgent. Scott Todd, do you agree? Yeah, I mean, you know, like you see your phone ring and, you know, you, it r- reminds me of back in the day, you know, like the house phone would ring and everybody would literally like run through the house to go, to go get the phone. Mm. And, you know, I think that it's the same way with email. You hear that little ding or text, you hear the ding and you've got to go run. No matter what you're doing, you've got to go run to see, well, what is it? It's almost like uh, Santa Claus has brought you a gift. Yeah. So, so Bill and Robert, how do you guys avoid the tyranny of the urgent personally? Number one, we set up our days correctly. Uh, mm-hmm. We start our days, both Bill and I are extremely intentional about the way that we launch our days. Mm-hmm. Every single day, uh, there's, this is part of the system that we kind of put together, but we, we always have a plan for the day. We always have that plan written down. We always prioritize that plan and we always delegate. (laughs) We're always delegating a whole lot. Mm. So there's a concept you might, your, your listeners might enjoy, but it's called the concept of the hourly rate. A lot of people have never heard of this, but let's say for example, and just, you know, for your listeners here, let's pretend that you're making 50 bucks an hour. Uh, You know, I don't even know what that would be per year, but 50 bucks an hour. I guarantee you there's some things that you're doing that you could pay somebody $15 an hour or $12 an hour or $20 an hour to do. Every time you do that stuff during the day, you're stealing from yourself. So you should always and only be working on things that are bringing you $50 an hour or $100 an hour or $500 an hour or $1,500 an hour. And there, there's things out there that can actually bring you that kind of money. That's the way to think. That's part of the mindset thing right there is every single day, look at, you know, what's this item worth? What can I pay somebody to do? Bill and I are lucky that we have two uh, seriously world-class assistants, executive assistants, but we didn't always have that. You know, we, we, we found them and we know how to find the right ones. And these, these two young ladies are great. Well, they're also, because they're the right people, whatever we give them, they do. And they understand how to, they figure it out so much quicker than we could do it. So we use assistance, and I know everybody can't do that, but you can do that even if you can't hire one. There's different ways to do that. You're th- there's another- oh, hold, on, hold on just a second, Bill, because Mark is thinking. Mark was getting ready to ask a question. What was it, Mark? Uh, he's got the blood going on his yeah. uh, walking treadmill there. That's incredible. Yeah, guys, look, sitting's the new smoking. Mm-hmm. So, there you, there you uh, go. You know, we'll, we'll get you on the, on the treadmill. Sitting's the new smoking. Got to remember that. So I can imagine somebody listening to this podcast and playing devil's advocate, right? They're, they're an attorney. Mm-hmm. They're trying to make partner. And the culture of the firm mm-hmm. is to work 60, 70 hours, 80 hours a week, right? And they're using it as a badge of honor. Now they're, they're going on and and it's easy for you guys to say, you know, you guys have made your money. Um, you guys are, you know, are a little bit more enlightened on this, but I'm 32 years old. I got to make partner. And yeah, my wife's going to have to put up with it or my spouse is going to have to put up with it for now. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it's going to happen. They're never going to get out of it. What do you well, say that- to that? Person. Okay, so, so I'm, itch, I'm itching to give you an answer. I am itching to get, you're saying, yeah, we've done it. We've already completed, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Back we in were 83, back in 1983, I was, I don't know if you've ever heard of Steak and Ale restaurant. I know Steak, Steak and Ale, yeah, okay. absolutely. They've been, they've been gone for 20 something years, but back in the day, they were the big deal. They were big before all the other chains were around. I worked with them. My boss's boss came to me one day. At that point, I'd been married four years. I had a one-year-old and a three-year-old, two sons at that point. And he said, if you don't get your act together, you won't be working here much longer. Now, I was a manager, you know, and I was working six days a week, and I was working most of the time 60 to 70 hours a week. In my mind, I said, are you out of your mind? I'm working six. I don't even know what my kids look like now, and you're telling me you're going to, you know, fire me. Then he said this. He said, if you want help, you ask me and I'll help you. 
But until then, you better get it. I said, I need help immediately. So he started teaching me things that we teach in the system today. I went from working 65 hours a week down to 60 to 55 to 50 to 45 to 40. And I kept getting promoted. And I started having several restaurants and things like that. So it's not anything to do with you're stuck. It's just not learning. And by the way, I learned that, which helped me get where I am today. Does that make sense to you? So I'm not fighting back. And I know there's culture and all that type of stuff. But I'd say that that's an excuse that you're hot, not you, but that your listeners are hiding behind. That, totally. well, that's just the culture of the place. I'll like say this. The, that's bull crap. Well, yeah. Scott, you, like you, Scott, well, Scott was in a Fortune 300 company. Yeah. Like, what was your culture, Scott? Well, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't you know, 80-hour weeks, right? Like, that, that's not the case. But mm -hmm. – like Mark, where I where I think people listening to this podcast where they would have a disconnect is, look, when okay, even in my old job, I could not outsource or delegate that work, right? Like, uh, I mean, I, I was I was a VP. I did not have an assistant. I had a team. I did have a team that reported to me. Okay, mm -hmm. but not everybody's going to be that lucky that they have a team or unlucky. I don't know which way you want to do it, but. Yeah. Uh, yes, you know, so there, there's somebody sitting on this podcast right now and they're, they, Mark, you like to pick on Procter and Gamble. They're in their podcast or they're in their, um, uh, they're in their cubicle, cubicle. Yeah. they're in their podcast, they're in their cubicle at Procter and Gamble. Right. And you know, they, they, they are a, a, a task employee that their job is to complete X tax. They're an accountant or there's something else and they don't have that, that, that ability to delegate. Well, then how am I going to implement what you're telling me, which is, hey, delegate your life. Okay, yeah, I can delegate. No, no, no I didn't say delegate. Uh, delegate what you can. That's a small okay. portion of it. Right. Well, I mean, but, it's a yeah. whole, Scott, it's a whole comprehensive system. It's not right. just delegation. But I want to, I'd, I'd like to go in a but different That's direction. a big deal, right? Because how do, I, how do I begin to lay the tracks for another, con like, I'm on these tracks, okay? I'm, I'm going, I'm living my life in Procter and Gamble land mm -hmm. and man, they should be paying us Mark, but I'm living my life in Procter and Gamble land and I'm, I'm doing this and I'm making my best effort. And I know like, this is not my long-term potential. My long, I'm not living up to my potential. My potential is like on these tracks that are over here. Mm -hmm. Well, which is what you're doing, which is what you're doing now. Right. Which is getting off of the Procter and Gamble. And you got off the tracks and you made your own tracks. I did. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but it's not that easy for everybody, you know, like it's well, it not, wasn't easy for you to do that. It wasn't, it wasn't easy for anybody to do that, but you choose to be on the tracks. Right. And getting on the, getting on the, getting, getting a medal and getting on the podium is not easy. And I'm so sorry if everybody thinks that winning in life is easy, they live in la la land and they need, they're just going to stay stuck where they are. Because what they do is they resign themselves to, well, this is my life and it's really hard. And so, oh my gosh. And they just stay stuck. That's fine. But we're not talking to those people. We're talking to the people who want to have a different and better life. I talked to a guy the other night, Steve. All right. So he's kind of leaning into coaching, hasn't made the decision. And here's the way the conversation went. Kind of like what you're talking about, Scott and Mark. I said, well, Describe your, your he's, he's a very high level C-suite executive. He makes tons of money. I learned during the conversation, he's a high school graduate. That's definitely holding him back in his mind. But I said, describe your work environment. He said, volatile, chaotic. He said, most of the time it's even nasty. Oh, really? Well, that sounds very productive for your life. Um, what effect does that have on you? When I get home, I'm totally exhausted and I'm not present with my family. Oh, well, how long has that been going on? Seven years. Why don't you leave and go to someplace that's productive for you? I make too much money. I'll never make the same amount of money. So in essence, what you're telling me, Steve, is that you being present with your family, you being a better human being has no price. There's no value to you. And so you're just going to stay stuck where you are. And that's my answer to your audience who's going, oh, that sounds so hard. I'm saying, so what you're saying is being stuck, being frenzied, being chaotic, being out of control has no cost to you as a human being, to your family, to you as a mother, a father, a son, a daughter, whatever. I, I don't agree with that. I'm so sorry. 
Bill, Bill I, I, I'll tell you, I, I agree with what you guys are saying because to me, the only way that you can break the course, the only way that you can change your course is to have the burning desire that's it. to do so, right? Because, and that, that's where I was kind of bringing you is that, you know, I, I can sit there and say, oh, I, they're lucky. Well, no, I'm not lucky. I, I, it, took, it took a massive amount of effort to change the course. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's easier to stay in your comfort zone and easier to know what you what you know. But if you Isn't have that crazy? desire for any change, if you have that burning desire for any change, you can overcome anything. And I guarantee you're so much happier now than you were. But it was hard as hell to do, and that's true. It's hard as hell. There was, there was a guy that uh, I was talking to yesterday that I've known a little while, but he um, he lost his job right before Christmas, and he works for a company that if I told you the name, you would know it, and he he thinks that he can't do something which is really what his dream in life would be so i told him this quick little thing and i'll shut up in a second but i want your your audience to hear this and i'm doing it by memory so if i screw it up i screw it up but until one is committed there is hesitancy the chance to draw back always ineffectiveness Concerning all acts of initiative, there is one elemental truth, the ignorance of which kills countless plans and splendid ideas, that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves to. And what that means is when you commit like you're saying, Scott, and you step over that line, nothing can hold you back. But you got to commit, you got to step over the line. And that goes back to what Bill was talking about, mindset. Yeah. Because our mindsets hold us in place. I agree. And, and then I do, I do also agree. I got to say, I do agree with the, the whole concept of the time value of, of your, you know, your time value, because uh, if there's jobs, you know, like I, I hear all the time people say, well, you know, I, well, I can't, I don't have time for that because I got to go. I, I can't, I can't start like my land business or my land investing business because, you know, I don't have any time because, you know, when I get, when I get home on the weekends, I got to mow the lawn. Well, guess what? You can hire someone to mow the lawn if that will make more money for you. It costs, right. I don't know, it depends on your lawn size, but let's say it costs you $100 a month. Well, right. you can make more than $100 a month by not mowing the lawn. Totally. Right? And that's, I mean, that's where I think, Robert, you're bringing up the, the, that piece too, because that's where I see. 100%. You know, it's, it's, it's making the decisions that will... It's making, wise, it's making wise decisions like that. But we're, we're so stuck in the day to day that we don't even realize what we can do. That's why even when I bought, when I hired a coach for myself, he started showing me some things about me that I did not see. I was just totally blind to it. Mm. And you need, a, whether it be a coach or a mentor or a friend or somebody who will speak truth into your life to help you break through those mindsets, you got to get that. Yeah, have you guys ever heard, heard of the Dickens method? No. What's that? No. Yeah, so this is a big Tony Robbins thing at, um, at, his, at his events. And it, it kind of made me think of what, of what essentially what you guys do is help people kind of bust through these limiting beliefs, these limiting patterns. So basically, you know, we all know the, the whole Scrooge, Charles Dickens, right? Mm -hmm. You go back in time. So what he does is he makes them visualize their life um, and go back in, in a time that was very painful for them mm. um, in their past and see, well, how did that limiting pattern affect you, right? What did, what did you regret? What, what, what would you do if you could do it over? You know, feel those feelings, see those sights, you know, hear those sounds at, at that moment. And then you, you, so you travel back in time, then you go to the, to the present, right? How are those limiting patterns costing you? Like, what, you know, what's it costing you to think that it's okay to have chaos in your life and work 60 hours a week, right? Feel that. Feel the, the feelings of your, your relationship going down the tubes because you're putting that money, like, you're, you know, like what, what Bill was saying, you know, what, as the, that guy who thought, oh, I, I can never get money, can never make the, get that job again, that make that money again. But what's that really costing you? And then go out you know, into you know, three months in the future, how is that, that going to affect you? five years, 10 years, and look at your right. life, feel those feelings, you know, now that same guy is divorced and he's yeah. seeing his children on the weekends, right? Um, and um, I think that, you know, when people feel what it's going to feel like, 
then they then they 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 can feel that pain without even having to go through the pain. I'm mean, already in pain, yeah. right? I, I think it could be really powerful. What do you guys think? I think we we especially when it comes to guys, we live in a world where we always believe that we have more time, and and uh, sometimes we believe there's do overs. So we believe we can tell our wife that, uh, and, and I'm talking from a guy perspective, lady, because we coach only guys. So I'm always thinking I'm talking to a group of guys. But um, we tell our wife that, honey, I, I'm just going to get this next promotion. I'm going to get this next raise. It'll be two years. It'll be okay. But you get caught in the cocaine of that and then you never get out of it. And the whole thing that guys don't realize is your wife is over this. She's over you. And she just hasn't told you perhaps, or maybe she has told you, but you're not listening. And so, uh, for example, I had little kids when I launched my first company, they were uh, one and three. And one of the reasons I launched my company, Robert remembers this, was I wanted to be president as a father and in corporate America, as president of a company, I wasn't. And so uh, being an entrepreneur was not easy and I was not present that much because I was traveling a lot trying to survive and feed my family as an entrepreneur. But I ultimately did get there and I realized that even though they were one in three, there were no do-overs. My, my son would never be one year, two months and one day. If I wasn't present that day, I would never have it again. He would never have me as his father again. I think we guys, especially um, ladies, I give you more credit, you get that. You get it intellectually, you get it emotionally. Men do not. And we somehow justify that, and it's not okay. There's an exercise we run in the boot camp. It's our last exercise, actually. It's called our 25-year desired future, and it's part of our tombstone thinking uh, exercises. We actually take a guy and we have him craft out his life 25 years from now. So for me and Robert, we'll be in our late 80s. We do have a very clear written vision, plan, uh, story of our life out 25 years. If a guy does that, let's say he's 40 years old and he looks out uh, at 65, he begins to see that a lot of the things that he's doing right now are not relevant to where he truly wants to be. He wants to be uh, invited to his daughter's wedding, not be estranged. He doesn't want to be living in a studio apartment. He doesn't want to have four stents in his heart and be taking 20 medications and not able to get out of the chair without help. You see, when they think of those things 25 years from now and they look back to the present and we have a guided exercise that walks you back to what you're doing right now, then Mark, we're doing exactly what you just said. We're envisioning the pleasure as well as the potential pain and we're beginning to realize that the seeds of our pain and the potential seeds of our pleasure are right here in our hands right today talking to you as soon as we're done with our podcast we need to choose to do things what will we choose to do i love it well it's that time in the podcast now where i'm going to put you guys on the spot and ask you for your tip of the week you've given tons given tons of value but uh, and that your mentorship is really, really appreciated. But now I'm going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their, list, improve their, uh, improve their businesses, improve their lives. Uh, Robert, what do you got? Okay. Well, I had a thought until you were really explaining what we're supposed to do. And now I think I need to change. actually the, the advice that I would give would be get out of your comfort zone and at least keep one foot out of your comfort zone at all times. Mm -hmm. uh, people tend to just stay in there and they just leave lives of quiet desperation as they used to say. But, uh, and then I, I think a tool, if you were asking that would be Bill and I just yesterday did a, on our podcast, six books, three books last year that we loved mm -hmm. and then three classic books that we loved. And so, Bill, I'm going to steal one of yours was the book Essentialism. Totally. I you love it. just stole Robert my thought, Rob. I, I just stole one. it, but I knew, I knew I did. So now you got to think of something else. But Greg McEwen. Greg McEwen. Awesome, yeah, awesome. Greg. And uh, by the way, the, what was the podcast yesterday? I think it's like number 178 or something. 178, like that. yeah. But um, it, it's, a, it's a good one. And it, it would be, we literally talked about six books. It's probably a 30 minute podcast, something like that. But I would guarantee you read those books, you're going to learn some good stuff. 
Yeah, that's one of my favorite books. Yeah, great book. Even Phil. the audio book is great because he, he's the, yeah. the uh, author and he's, he's reading it and he's got a great British accent. Uh, Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, I, I don't know if this is necessarily a tip per se to be more productive, but I, I just found it to be pretty interesting. There's a uh, website, you should check it out, the remotelife.com. Mm -hmm. And what this company does is this company plans uh, 30 day trips where basically you can go and work. They take 30 people at a time. So you and 30 other interesting people or 29 other interesting people, you go to different places and uh, you live in like Southeast Asia, Asia for a month, you know, like, uh, you know, you could live in Thailand for $1,300 a month or, you know, you, if they go to Cambodia, live over there. So they provide you with your place to live, your local ambassador, you know, uh, your, your pickup. They basically, it's like, you know, Uber, if you will, of traveling or remote working. For someone out there that wants to try to, you know, do our land business from afar, it's a great way of, of testing it out. Oh, this mm. is a fantastic tip. How'd you find this? Uh, searching. <laughs> I love this. I love this. Well, well he's right. trying to, he's actually trying to tell you something, uh, about <laughs> he's gonna be here in a couple of months. Yeah. Right. Right. All right, Bill, what's your tip of the week? You've already <laughs> given a lot of tips, but I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, beg you for one more. Thanks. Uh, two actually, uh, one is a, uh, a sister book to Robert's Essentialism. Um, Greg McKeon was on our podcast. You should listen to his episode because he, he amplifies and gives some secret tips that are not in the book. Uh, the book that I'm going to recommend is by Gary Keller. It's called The One Thing. Both of these are prescribed reading by our clients. <laughs> you guys, I, these are the books I give away at boot camp, honestly. There you go. The one so thing I love, and, and I love Essentialism. We are really cut from the same cloth. That's hilarious. Come on. And I'm going to, I'm going to give you a quick website. It's called helpmegetmorefreedom.com. Perfect. Okay. That's our, that's our tips. Uh, we've got uh, three magical steps there uh, that could potentially lead to uh, us personally uh, talking to you on a free consultation call. Uh, we call that a freedom breakthrough session. And here's, and here's what I want to leave your audience. Well, when I talk about freedom, Here's what we mean by freedom. Freedom to go big at work without feeling guilty you're neglecting something at home with the ones you love. And freedom to be present, fully present at home, not sneaking a look at your iPhone, be present with the ones you love at home and know definitively that you are not skipping a beat at work. This is the kind of freedom that I'm talking about. And by the way, your audience, there's a bunch of guys on this call right now pointing fingers at each other. <laughs> we get it, guys. We've been there. I love it. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I should have hired you guys years ago. Because, um, you know. Well, today you know, wouldn't be a bad day to do that, Mark. Yeah, What's I the know. best time to plant a tree 25 years ago? What's the second best time today? And we do have one slot available for a, for a rock star like you. In the next five it. minutes, one slot left. I love it. All right. So my tip of the week is going to be RustyLionAcademy.com. And really, you know, the, 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 the beautiful thing about this podcast is um, you get, you know, mentorship for the time that we're, we're interviewing these experts. But oftentimes we'll have a guest or guests that can literally not just improve your business at, a, at an incremental you know, level, which I think is probably what you, you would get a lot of times. But you know, Rusty Lion Academy could actually um, transform your life. And I, I really liked what Robert and Bill said, you know, eight weeks to have the rest of your life. Um, not, not a bad, not a bad trade-off. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and Scott was, you know, smiling when they're saying, Hey, don't, you know, when you go home, be present. I mean, I talk about it on the podcast all the time. I'd, I'd be at dinner guys. And I would, I'd be like, Hey, I, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'd have to go to the bathroom. I'd go sneak and check my email like a drug addict. <laughs> now, I will tell you that Cal Newport has literally changed my life with one simple brain hack. I say to myself at five 30, 
Um, I check my calendar for the next day and I say to myself, commencing shutdown. And I'm literally shut down for the rest of the night. And it's really worked for me. I've been two weeks now sober and I'm really proud of it. I am so proud of you. And I know your family is too. And um, congratulations. And you're a great example uh, of, a, of a word. And that is intentionality. Thank so you. a lot of guys probably talk the talk but you're doing the walk and, and that's very commendable. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I really appreciate you guys coming on. I want to remind the listeners um, the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests uh, like a Bill Watkins or a Robert Mallon from RustyLionAcademy.com to come on this podcast is if you do us a small favor of subscribing, rating, and reviewing the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. Today's podcast is sponsored by postingdomination.com forward slash The Land Geek. Thanks, everybody. Bill, Robert, it's been a pleasure. And uh, Scott, let freedom ring. ring. Thanks, guys. Nice, guys. Stop. Thank you.